Last week, we talked about how you can capture crisp sunbursts with the right composition, settings, and other environmental factors. But once you've captured the exposures, there's still quite a bit of post-production work ahead of you. I love Lightroom for its non-destructive workflow and intuitive controls, but unfortunately, it doesn't play well with Photoshop in a non-destructive way. I finally landed on a non-destructive editing workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm still not quite happy with it, but I wanted to share it with you guys, and hopefully it will save you some time when you go to process your own sunburst shots. To demonstrate, I'm going to use these shots from Lawfrig Fell. Now, last week I showed you some fun tricks that you can use to get really crisp sunbursts. So in particular, I took two exposures for this shot of Lawfrig. I took one where I used my finger to cover the sun to cut out the flare, and then one with the flare. Now you'll notice that this one is quite noisy, and that's because I've actually just bumped up the exposure to match the exposures from the two. If I were to reset this image, it would be really dark. So that's the first step that you want to do. Find your two exposures, I recommend stacking them, and hit D to go to the develop module and turn on syncing for a moment. So I'm going to turn on sync. I've already done some edits here, but here's the basics of what you want to do. You should come down here to lens correction and absolutely turn on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. You'll want to do this to both images. If you omit either of these steps, it's going to be really difficult to align these images if they shifted even slightly. I was a little bit lazy this day when I took these shots. I didn't use a tripod, and so because of that, there is a little bit of movement between the two images, and if you don't enable profile corrections, it's going to be next to impossible to align them. So go ahead and turn that on unless you were more fortunate and uh, used a tripod when you shot these, and don't forget to turn off auto-syncing once you're done. I want to match the exposure from these two images. Now, if I dial back this exposure to what it was before, Here's what it looked like. It was very dark. So this exposure for the landscape is very well exposed. This one on the other hand is an exposure for the sunburst. So because of that, there's a huge difference between these two. And what you want to do is get the exposures to look the same. You can either eyeball it or you can do a little bit of math. I'll put a link to a exposure difference calculator that I used to figure out what the difference between these two exposures was based on the settings. In this particular image, it was about three stops difference. And so once you do this, you should get two exposures that are about the same. You'll also want to match their white balances exactly. So I got into a process of selecting both images at a time. Whenever I made adjustments to one of these exposures, I'd come over here and click Sync Settings, and I would sync all of the settings except for exposure. Exposure is going to be the one thing that differs between these two. As you dial in any of your settings throughout this entire process, you can automatically copy that over to the other exposure by selecting both images, leaving the source image, the one that you want to copy settings from, and then come over here to the sidebar and click Sync Settings. This will help a lot with the workflow. Now we're ready to go into Photoshop. Unfortunately, HDR merge in Lightroom won't work here because the finger is very dark, and so it's going to use that in the net exposure. And turning on deghosting or some of those other settings in HDR merge won't do the trick. So we're going to have to manually merge these in Photoshop and treat it like a composite. And unfortunately, this workflow is awful. I can't tell you how many days, nearly weeks, I've wasted trying to find a good composite workflow with Lightroom where I could take different exposures, merge them together, and then treat the end result like a raw image. Because unfortunately, Lightroom does not do a good job of coloring on top of a Photoshop document. So basically, you have to do as much work as you can in Lightroom first and then go into Photoshop or do the reverse. Do as little as possible in Lightroom and then switch to Photoshop. I wasn't happy with either, so here's an alternate workflow I came up with. You want to right click on either one of these actually. You don't need to open up both. Um, I recommend selecting whichever one of these you want to be your base exposure. So imagine when you go to publish this photo, which one of these do you want the settings to apply from? Well, in this case, I think the one where I'm just blocking out the flare, that's going to be my base exposure. And you're going to come down here to Edit In and open as Smart Object in Photoshop. This will take just a minute. And once it opens up, to get a nice round tripping and non-destructive workflow, we need these to be linked Smart Objects. The way you can tell is down here, this icon next to the thumbnail shows that it's a Smart Object. Unfortunately, when we make changes to the coloring in Lightroom, those changes are not going to propagate to Photoshop. We would have to manually transfer settings through Adobe Camera Raw, which unfortunately is next to impossible to do 
you can't transfer settings from Lightroom to Adobe Camera Raw without losing something in the process, namely those local adjustments. The only way that I've found to make this work is to convert this to a linked smart object. So go back to Lightroom. If you hold down, or if you click on this image and get back to Photoshop, just before you let go, hold down the Option key, then let go. Now it's going to open up Adobe Camera Raw. Just hit OK. Don't make any changes here because in the end we're going to make these changes in Lightroom. And unfortunately it's going to be the wrong size, so just make sure that you, un in the View menu, you have Snap turned on. That'll make it a little bit easier to make this exactly the same size as the canvas. In my case, it says exactly 24 inches by 16. Perfect. Hit the return key. Now, notice that the icon for this one is a little bit different. So this is a linked smart object, which means whenever we make changes to the editing in Lightroom, it's going to propagate into, into Photoshop. Come back here to the initial smart object that Photoshop put in here and just hit the delete key. Now we need to bring back the other exposure. So come back to Lightroom and we'll do the same thing. Hold and switch back to Photoshop and then hold down the option key and you should get the special cursor. We'll drop it in here. It'll open up Adobe Camera Raw. Again, don't make any changes here. And then resize this and hit the return key. So if I flip this on and off, we now have these two exposures. We've got a little bit of work to do here in Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is align these layers. And because this is going to be our base exposure, that means this top layer with the sun flare is gonna be the one that's moving around. I've linked to a previous vlog where we talked about doing composites in Photoshop and Lightroom, sort of a round tripping workflow, and we did that same alignment process here. So I won't reiterate how you do that here. Let me just remind you that if you switch the blend mode on the top layer to difference, it'll make it a lot easier to see when you've got things lined up correctly. But go check out that vlog for a reminder of how you can line these up. I'm just gonna speed through it here. All right, once we've got these lined up, this is what it should look like. You should see that the two layers are so lined up that in difference mode, there's only a very tiny bit showing through. I'm gonna change this from difference to normal. And when I flip this on and off, you can see that they are pretty closely aligned. Now what we wanna do is we only want the sun flare part of the top exposure to show through. So I'm gonna come in here and hit mask and hit Command I or on Windows, Control I I think, to invert it and grab my brush tool, tap B, and I wanna use a fairly large brush, but I want it to maybe be 50% hard. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And now I just want to brush in the sun flare, but nothing else. Uh, no, actually I wanna do the whole sky, cause this exposure, um, I also expose it for the sky. You hopefully had an exposure for the landscape, the sky, and the sunburst. In my case, when I was first shooting this, I only did two. I did one for the sunburst, which also doubled as an exposure for the sky, and then one for the landscape. This is already pretty close. Uh, you could spend quite a bit of time tidying this up, but this is already fairly convincing. The only issue we have here is the borders of this aren't quite right. That won't be a problem. We'll just crop this later, or you could always use the patch tool. I tend to just crop these images when they don't quite line up. And next time I'll shoot with a tripod so that way I won't have to do any cropping at all. Now once you've combined these two images together, you probably have a lot of editing left that you need to do. But rather than do it in Photoshop, you can actually do it in Lightroom because we did these as linked smart objects. So if I come back here to Lightroom and make a change to one of these, let's say that I change the white balance uh, to make it a little bit cooler. Maybe I'll change it to 4000. Once I've done that, you can actually hit Command S in Lightroom and this will save the edits directly to the raw file. Now, I'll be honest, I hate that Lightroom forces me to do this for DNGs because this means when I have my backup running, it sees this DNG file, which is a raw file, an unprocessed file, it sees it as a completely new file now that I'm saving these edits directly to the file. Normally, you save all those edits directly into Lightroom's catalog and it never touches the raw files, which is great for backups, especially when, like me, you don't always have access to great Wi-Fi to do online backups. Unfortunately, Photoshop can't see edit changes that you've made in the Lightroom catalog. It only sees changes to the source DNG file. So um, I try not to make this a habit, 
but when I particularly work with Sunburst or other composites and I really need that non-destructive workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop, I go ahead and hit Command S to save that metadata directly to the file. It doesn't change the raw image, it just updates the processing settings directly in that file. And now when you go to Photoshop, fingers crossed, it'll probably give you an hourglass and then a few moments later, it'll update. I've found it to be very buggy. Uh, very often I get this completely weird coloring that just doesn't look right at all. And so I often have to double click on that layer and we'll see that in Adobe Camera Raw, the settings have been updated. This image is much cooler than it was before. And when I hit OK, then it will refresh that layer. I think it, this is just a matter of those layers get out of sync for whatever reason. So it's not a perfect workflow. It's very time consuming, but it can, it can help you have that non-destructive flow. Now, when you've made those changes, don't forget that you can automatically propagate those exact same settings, local settings and everything, to your other exposure. Just click it as well, you hold down Command or hold down Shift, and then come over here to the side and click Sync Settings. Again, you want to sync everything except the exposure. The exposure is the only thing that's going to be different between those. I need to hit Command S back in Lightroom first to save these edits back to the DNGs. If I come back to Photoshop and give it a moment, hopefully it should reload without too much trouble. All right, that looks good. When you're doing this kind of round tripping workflow, the reason we do it is you want to be able to edit these raw images in Lightroom, maybe where you're most comfortable, and also where you have access to all this dynamic range, but you need to combine them into a single image, and unfortunately Lightroom's HDR merge won't do the trick here, so you've got to go into Photoshop, merge these into a composite, but by turning these into linked smart objects instead of just regular smart objects, all the changes that we make here in Lightroom once we hit Command S, will be reflected in the Photoshop document, which also has the nice benefit of giving us an overall smaller Photoshop document. So a bit of a pain, but if you want that non-destructive workflow, that's the only way I've found. If you know of a better way to do this non-destructive flow between Lightroom and Photoshop, please share it in the comments, share it in YouTube, and maybe I'll be able to give it a shout out next time we do another composite tutorial. But uh, until then, I hope this was useful. Hope that saves you some time and helps you create some really glorious crisp sunbursts on your next landscape photography shoot. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the latest on-location vlogs, digital nomad tips, and landscape photography tutorials.